Okay, so uh, this is going to be my first time ever duck hunting in this manner with decoys and calls. Yep. Elliot's an old pro at it. <laughs> Me, we never did do it this way. We would just wait for a real windy day, go into the bog ponds, and do spot and stocks and shoot our ducks that way. Retrieve it with a, a telescopic rod and, and jigger. You're going to swim Chase for it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Ellie's gonna go swimming. All right, uh, we're leaving the house. It's probably almost uh, six o'clock now. It's 5.51. And we're going duck hunting. I set this up little kid So Ellie says to me, let's go duck hunting tomorrow, Charlie. Knows the spot, lots of ducks. The only ducks out there, there's the decoys. But that's not true. I seen I seen one. It pitched down over there behind that island. There's a little cove in there. We've been seeing eagles and crows. seagulls and crows. We're now having a, a boil up. That's the setup. Ice and everything on the underwater. Got a spread of decoys over there. And a spread of decoys right here. I'm gonna go over, get by the Get warmed up by the kettle. Elliot and I had just finished talking about how if you take somebody out to a new hunting spot, you won't see any animals. Or if you take a camera along, you don't see any animals. What are you thinking? <laughs> it's always a way, right? Oh, always the way. <laughs> and I took my other camera. I just put it back in this case. Because I turned it on to get some video. SD card home in the computer. And I charged up the batteries for it last night and everything. Oh, wow. I don't think you're going to need it anyway. Probably not. No. <laughs> well, we've been here a couple hours now. And, uh... Never seen, never seen a duck other than one, I guess it was a meganzer that landed over on the other side of there. String of decoys here, I don't know if you guys can see that, how well the camera's picking that up. And I don't know if they're just as able to pick up Elliot over there, picking up these decoys. Gonna call this one on the lack of no ducks, and there's where we're we're hid behind that. So we just started taking in the decoys. Ellie had uh, how many strings in? Two, two. Two, yeah. He had two strings of decoys in. We said we had got a couple more out there, and uh, a flock of ducks come in and they pitch. They're off there. Right there. There's two more flying right there. Look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call, 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 call. Call her. See if we can bring them over this way. Did they pitch with the other ones? No, I didn't saw it. Those are my answers. Oh, there's more coming, Charlie. Oh, there's the ducks are down there. The ducks are starting to move now. They're coming our way. Jeez. Oh, you can see a trend. If I had my other camera going, you'd be able to see them. As luck would have it, as soon as we decided to leave and Elliot started taking in decoys, a couple of flocks of ducks came by. Enough ducks out there to feed an army. 
<laughs> or two Newfoundlanders. An army of two Newfoundlanders. Well, when I get home, I'm going to have to look up the term drizzle and what it means for the rest of the world. Because here in Newfoundland, it means downpour. Uh, I checked the weather report before I came out today, and it said we had a chance of drizzle this afternoon. Well, I thought, you know, drizzle to me, light, soft, rain, small little water droplets falling gently to the earth and moistening the ground. Uh, uh not here in Newfoundland. Drizzle means downpour. I was about two kilometers away from the bike when it happened. And I am soaked to the bone, to the bone, saturated. Saturated, soaking wet. Anyway, heading home now. You get a nice hot shower and some dry clothes. In one of the last videos that I did, somebody had questioned as to why I have the bungee cord around the ankle of my boots, and here is why. It just helps to keep the pant leg out of the mud. So, <laughs> I don't know the exact date. It's Friday, October 8th, 9th, or 10th, I guess. And this is what we have going on. Snowing. Soon be tundra time. And in another one of my videos, someone was asking about, you know, do we get a lot of wind here? Well, yeah, we do. About every second day. And this is just a couple of samples from the wind that we do get here on the island. Okay, so I'm out here and I just wanted to see how much work I have ahead of me to finish off this little section of trail. I, I did some cutting here uh, at the end of last winter and you can see the height of uh, where I was cutting. And that was in April month. And I kicked down and I ended up uh, kicking down the, the snow to, to make my cut. So our, in April, the snow was still up over these cuts that you see behind me, right in, right in here. So I just wanted to come. It's only a small section, maybe 40 yards. It's only going to take me a few minutes to, to clean this up when I do come in here with my, uh, my power saw. Um, right now I need to get some uh, bar oil for it. But this is where the old trail used to be. We would come out of here and cut straight across and go into there. So we'll take you guys in here with me. A lot of little shrubbery and stuff I need to get cut. But for the most part, there's not going to be a lot of work. You can see, I don't know if you can see this or not, the height of these cuts. Like I said, this is, this is an April cut. And this is me stomping down the snow and making a cut. April. Hard to believe, eh? Hard to believe. I'm going to take my time and get this area cleaned up before the snow flies. And that way when the snow does come, ooh, nice moose track right there. More evidence of moose. But there's not going to be, that's most of the work right there. Look. Down through that section right there. And there's not a lot of work. You see where I, I made the cuts on, on these trees. 
as well. But I'm going to cut them all off. They're all leaning over, so anything that's leaning towards the trail, I'm just going to cut off. And I'm going to store them over here on this side. Because uh, I believe Bernard might want to put a little garden back here next spring. So if that happens, I'll have an area already cleared out a little bit for him. This is a good soil for planting. There used to be rhubarb planted in here years ago. These are cuts that I made last year when the snow was still down. So just give you an indication of what we do get here for snow, eh? We get a lot of snow here, no doubt about it. But I'm going to get this area all cleaned up. Cut off all the, those trees, make a nice wide pat down through here. Here's the area I said I had to uh, clean up in the last video. And I came in here the other night and I did just that. This, this was the old trail. So cut off all the alders. So I cut off all the alder trees that were leaning out over towards the road here. Looks like we had a moose in here. And that's where it meets up with the other trail. I'll show you that in a second. You see how it just marries right on up with the trail, see? So now we'll be able to come straight, straight down. Straight out. Looking forward to the winter now. And, and getting up and hopefully finishing off cutting out the uh, the granny trail the old granny trail have it go straight up through but yeah there was there was a moose in here last night those tracks weren't there yesterday so good to see me and my me actually me and my wife were out here late last evening so and that was just before dark, just just before supper. So, in that time, between now and then, there was moose here. Oh, here with uh, Chase Bennett. And Chase makes little customized stoves out of uh, recycled propane tanks. Am I right in saying that, Chase? Yep, you are. Yeah. So they fit uh, four inch pipes. And they're good for, for uh, small tents and, and sheds and little garages and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I just came out here and, and got one. So this is the one I, uh, I just got for uh, my uh, tent stove. Because if you remember my last video where I was camping out, I was every hour on the hour putting wood into it. So again, it's a four inch, it's a four inch pipe. And uh, Chase has made a nice little door and stuff for it. And that door, I do believe, Chase, we measured that out to be five and a half inches, was it? Yeah. From top to bottom. And well, it's gotta be at least eight inches across. Eight inches across, yeah, somewhere. Like yeah. So it's a, a dandy, a dandy little stove, boy. And it's not that heavy. Oh, well, here we go. We're gonna find out now. Yeah, it was five and a half by eight inches. Five and a half by eight inches. That was a good guessing. And he has the, uh, he got it all leveled off up on top there, where you can. Uh, so we can put a pan on. Put a pan or anything. 
onto it for frying a bit of bacon and eggs in the morning. So Chase, uh, you, you want to tell people uh, what you uh, sell them for? Uh, 200 bucks, 200 bucks each. Two different sizes, 30 pound or uh, 20 pound. So there you go. Same amount of work in both, so same price. There you go. So it's uh, definitely worth 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 uh, worth the money, I think. Lifetime warranty. We're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a test uh, soon, Chase. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah. See what we can get. See if we can get more than an hour of sleep. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah. But anyways, thank you very much, my friend. Uh, you'll see this stove in use on one of my uh, upcoming videos. Perfect. Thank you very kindly. No trouble. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if that's something you're into. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're subscribed, hit that little bell for notifications. Every time I upload a video, you'll be notified.